Okay, good evening, guys. Welcome to our presentation about Stella Mara's wreck diving on Curacao. My name is Alain Tichelaar, and I'm one of the few full rebreeder, full trimix instructors on Curacao. We have one or two shops doing it. And of course, one of my teammates, Bernardo, he will introduce himself right now because he's the one I'm doing all the dives with. Okay, my name is Bernardo van Hoof, actually van Hoof, but that's a little bit strange uh, in English. And yeah, I met this guy uh, many years ago and we're making the crazy dives on Curacao. Okay, Alain, up to you. So let's see if we can start first in video, guys, about Curacao and why Curacao. I tried getting bigger, but... Okay, guys, this is a small introduction from Curacao. And now we want to go to the main topic of our island. And that will be one of the amazing dive sites. And it's actually, it's how you call it, an over the limit or exponential uh, future. level. Yes, Bernard. If you pick up, I'm gonna pick, gonna pick, pick up the photo. Come, Bernard, Bernard. Come. Okay, guys. Oh, the Superior Future is one of the three wrecks that were confiscated by the government of Curacao. And okay, the you know the Stella Maris is. Um, in the, the 70s, there were three vessels that were confiscated by the government of Curaçao. There you have the one that was sunken over here. It's called the Stella Maris. It was confiscated because it was involved with, uh, with drugs trafficking. And for a long time, it was on the chain, uh, you know, and then uh, it was donated to the dive industry. Yes, as it was donated to the dive industry, it took, of course, a longer time to get the wreck ready. And it was a long time in front of the beaches from Curacao. And in the area, they call it Vapor Kibra. In the local language, that's called broken ship. Um, of course, the guy who tried to do it didn't know that the boat actually was, of course, used for drugs, or he did it. And as you know, drugs boats are always having their own IDs, always having their own rules, and they never stay the same. So, of course, the day came when it was time to sink the boat, and the boat had other IDs. So the moment he went under, he started rolling over his long side, so not backwards, but over the wrong side, and he rolled down all the way down the reef, way too far for recreational diving so how Actually, long was the, the ship got lost yeah they got lost that was it 12 years i don't yes i think so eh? yeah they lost it <laughs> it's it's about 12 years before the boat was found by another dive shop on the island 
And they actually saw the chains first, first the, uh, the old anchors, and then they say, hey, the chains go somewhere deeper. This guy was in the beginning, beginning of the 90s, and tech diving was not well as involved as now. Of course, it's all the open circuit. They use Trimix, but not rebreathers like we do these days. So they found the boat back. After that, we got one of the major guys on the island, substation Curacao. They got a sub. And the substation was able to go up to 1,000 feet. So they were really, really in range to find the wreck back. Um, the wreck itself is really, really interesting to explore. And of course, guys like us, Bernardo and me, when you hear of the wreck, then you have an idea, let's go, guys. We have to try to explore it. And we have to try to get there with diving. So the first thing we asked was a local guy to drop an anchor. Bernardo, did we hear anything from this guy? Sorry? The guy who was dropping the anchor, did we hear anything from this guy? No, no. No, really. we never heard of him. There was, uh, you know, it's all promises, promises. And then we got, uh, you know, there was uh, the company that was uh, doing the, the mega pier, the new mega pier, where they had uh, these enormous um, concrete blocks. And they said, ah, yeah, once we finish, we will drop one off so you have a mooring place for the boat. Ah, didn't happen. So we had to do it ourselves. So Alain and me, we went down to the first anchor, had a 50 meters line up and a buoy and uh, made our own mooring place, right? Correct. So uh, we had a dive to go to drop the line up to 50, 55 meters. And as many of you guys know in technical diving, the moment you go over 40 meters, any time longer, we'll hit the time to wait longer and longer. And of course, bringing a line down is never ever easy. So we quite spend some time getting the line down make the attachment and of course make a buoy uh, we made the line from about 40 45 meters so the line stopped at about 12 meters 40 feet yeah something like that correct so we were more than happy because finally we were able to make a safe approach down to a wreck in expedition level because these are not the dives that you do on a sunday afternoon or a saturday morning so when we had this one done, we went back home, sitting in the garden, uh, drinking, of course, some rum, because it's Caribbean, or not, Bernardo? Uh -huh. Right. Playing, playing with a whiteboard. And then we were able to do our first hit to the wreck. And we show you a little bit what we saw the first time. Because, yeah, the first time was like, OK, is it really there? The guys from substation Curacao were able to guide us to the anchors and of course to our mooring line at that moment we were off on our own our first time going down to find the wreck and this is what it looks like when we saw her for the first time yeah and it's eerie i tell you we went down the anchor chains and you get a drop off it goes all down and it gets darker and darker but still and the water gets crystal clear and then suddenly you see the, the bow looming up to you. Ah, it's a magnificent uh, fish. And you can see that anchor hole. I mean, it's an easy to find a ship because you just follow the anchor line. Like here, a little bit black and white videos because, yeah, we were not really prepared of doing the real, really, really, really good stuff. So, yeah, there we were. What's next? <laughs> uh, something with planning. <laughs> yeah, something something with planning, doing a safe dive, because the average reader will have a uh, support time of four hours. And we start planning with some bottom mix, and then it became, what was it, the first time, seven hours? Yeah, seven, seven and a half. Oof. Seven hours on a rebreather, you're way, way over the limits of safe diving. So, something else. And then you start thinking like, okay, can we do something? 
can we do a little bit more of it uh different diluents for the most of you guys looking at this one technical diving diluents will, will tell you what it is open circuit divers you have a lot of tanks with you different blends different mixes and then you're able to make your way back to the surface because 10 minutes down there gives you four or five hours i think this is not a dive for open circuit not at all well we can't say no to the guys oh okay well so we are, are, yes you need we were able to get down there to get back there and we plan the dive with some different diluents. Of course, some dry suit diving. It took longer as we expected. But okay, that's always with planning on these deep dives. Bernardo was ready with his camera. Light charged, everything ready, ready for a dive. Uh, how many tanks did we have with us? Six, seven, eight? Yeah, something uh, like that. Out. Yeah, yeah. But we could stay, sir. Yeah. yeah, and then we were finally ready to make it. To the wreck on the way that we want to do make it to the wreck like okay there we go we have the lights we're able to bring some light to the wreck and then of course it starts to become really 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 different and this is how the wreck looks when you go with the right video camera my teammate bernardo is filming again and yeah i'm the one uh, hanging around in the water here that's how it is. And that this is on the second one. Once you're at the wreck. Well, now this is the front, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you see, around 125, 130 meters, it's pretty dark, even in the Caribbean. And that's how we did it. Uh, we came back after, what is it, half an hour exploring in the cargo room. And then we, of course, had to hang three, four hours. Yep. But we were like, we did it. We're ready to do it. And I don't know what the feeling was from Bernardo, but it was like, okay, we made it. We were in the cargo hold, so now we have to do the rest of the boat. Correct? Correct, Mundo. And then, of course, you have uh, seasons in Curaçao in February, March. And starting a little bit earlier, we have the raining season. The current will come a little bit more like, OK, it's not ready for technical diving because these dives you don't do on a lot of current. So it took, again, a longer time before we were able to go down. Of course, more planning. In the meantime, uh, Bernardo was with Kobe divers able to make a boat dive on it, so they hooked the blue pearl on it. How was that, Bernardo? Yeah, that was great. Actually, uh, you know, we went uh, all the way down um, and found out that the deepest point was uh, about 135, 140 meters, because nobody could really tell us. You know, there was we we were like the the the, the people tell us inconsistent uh, things. One said 175 meters, one of the, it's 140 meters, the deepest point. And that was good to know because that gives us an idea for future planning. And that was great to do. Yeah. I was, uh, through circumstances, not easy to go with the guys, but I was there, of course, in the, in the idea. Okay. They came back with new information. So we were able to uh, replan again, uh, go over our bottom mix again go over our diluents again because yeah the problem is with these dives the longer you are there the longer you have to wait before you're able to get out and yeah getting dry suits ready getting cameras ready and then all of a sudden uh, one of my friends from holland came and he's also a uh, really uh, experienced repeater diver and we said let's do it again that day was uh, my lucky day, because last time was Bernardo's lucky day. I was able to go to the wreck again. And again, guys, the guys from Substation, the guys with uh, amazing subs, helped us out. Bernardo was there as well. And we made it this time all the way to the propeller. And on our way back, this is a smaller camera, not the same one Bernardo used. So we have to go back again and explore the wreck. This is what we saw when we came at around 100 
3835 meters. This is the back of the wreck after rolling down the reefs. Yeah, basically you need to see this for yourself. I mean, it's it's nice, uh, but there's no video image that can can give you the experience when you do it yourself. It's amazing. Yeah, if you see like this, then you want to go back, you want to go explore. Oh, like yeah. All the amazing wreck sites of the island. Because it's, it's, it's a superior producer, that's actually an easy wreck for technical divers because 30 meters you can explore. You can spend an hour and still are on time back home. But this one, you have the feeling like, I want to see more, I want to go in, I want to penetrate the wreck, I want to do it. But then you come back to the same old questions like, and now, what can we do now? Yeah, so at the moment, we're still looking at finding different mixes of gases, looking at uh, the way to use the hybridus, because we definitely, definitely want to go back and explore the whole, whole wreck. So, Bernardo, um, what's your idea of getting back there? What are we going to do about that as soon as possible? Or first, take some other things like the lining or boat support? I, I think we should, uh, we should look into, you know, the, the next step. You know, every step uh, further is, uh, yeah, it's more an adventure, but it also has its, has its inherent uh, um, uh, dangers. And we have to really be aware of that because, you know, once we start really penetrating the, the ship, that's on those kinds of depths, that's not uh, just like a, a, a Saturday afternoon dive. And uh, we need to carefully plan this. We need to have support, certainly support divers. Remember my last dive yeah. here, I had uh, an oxygen uh, failure. <clears throat> Okay, I could uh, solve it and uh, even end the dive on the rebreather. But yeah, on those depths, when things go wrong, it, uh, the, the, the magnitude doubles by every 10 meters. And we are very aware of that. Um, but I think we can do it. I think, uh, but uh, it's slow. We need to do many dives to see how far we can go and how far we can go and still be safe. But first, it's safe. Yeah, because the main mission of all our dives is coming back home safe. We want to yeah. see the wreck. We want to explore. We want to see the, the fish life around it. But coming back is way, way, way more important. I tell and you, my, my wife will kill me if I don't come back alive. <laughs> Look, there you go, there you go. So at the moment, we inspecting this the line if is the chain still what it is is this line still safe for another boat or can we make another position for staging some more tanks because what we do we don't have the feeling we can go down with big four ones to still explore the tanks so we stage two on an area where we have to come back because the only way to go to the salamars is follow the chain follow up to the bow and come back so yeah coming back is of course always long but still amazing the reefs around there is in the national park from curacao the reefs are there are really 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 stunning it's it's really nice to hang around coming back start your stops at 50 meters and then the last one nine six three meters Never, never, ever boring. Even if you have to look at 45 minutes, 46 minutes of deco time at three meter, you're still lucky because it's still like, okay, um, this is it. We're hanging here. Nature gives us anything to enjoy and have some fun here. So if you ever, ever have the idea, guys, I'm on the same level or maybe better than us because uh, we not we always know that there are other guys doing it better than us less than us if you see these videos and you think hey 
I can help them or I want to explore them, then what should they do, uh, Bernardo? Sorry, what's the? If, if they want to explore the wreck as well, what should the tech divers do in the world? Come to us and join the us. Wreck. And uh, we have it all. We have, uh, we support it all. All the rebreather stuff that you have uh, and uh, what you need. We have the, the helium, the oxygen, the, the, the boat support, support divers. They're pretty much uh, technical divers uh, that can support us, uh, not to all the way down, but uh, to 50, 60 meters. That's no problem. And um, yeah, we can do it. And it's really an amazing wreck, and there's still a lot to discover. Um, so just just to give you an idea from what we did and how it is to go down there, we have one major promo video. It's, it goes from the line down. It explains a little bit more about the wreck. And you see us going down and coming back. For some reason, I get it working. There it goes. This is the whole video about the Stella Maris. And guys, when you see this, you know for sure you have to go there. Yeah, if it, if it goes. I see on my screen, I don't see it going, but I know the video, obviously. Uh -huh. He's running, he's running, he's running, because yeah. there, we go. there we have the line, guys. Here you see the mooring line up from 10 to 55 meters. And oops, that's me again. You explain this, you see the second wreck, it's about 60, 65 meters. So yeah. it just goes to the drop off. This is where the second anchor is. There, there we go into the twilight zone. This is the moment you start falling down. And I'm really lucky that Bernardo is filming here because this is the way he does it. Leave me hanging in the dark. <laughs> and he's still there. You see the girls at 60 meters is uh, getting less. And there she is again, the lady. Oh, we have some nice music as well. Here you see me because I was a little bit faster than Bernardo as well. Because someone has to be on the wreck when he's filming, isn't it? The lady, Stella Maris, is around uh, 91 till 95 meters long. So it's quite a long distance to swim if you're able to get there. And then go down to the propeller at the back and work your way around. For me, it's all the time like, okay, I'm exploring a wreck, and then you look at your computer and oops. Yep. In, in an area where <laughs> not many divers were before. Ah, uh, yeah. It looks all so easy because, yeah, it's uh, 132 meters here in the cargo hall, and you're there like, oops, it's me. You know, the good thing is uh, uh, the waters are crystal, crystal clear. It's really unbelievable. Uh, you know, once you go to uh, one or two thermal clients, there is no sail. There is, it's amazing. It's really, well, you can see it on the video, obviously. Uh, the, the, the pictures are absolutely great. And I can't wait to go myself inside of it because uh, that, that will be the ultimate experience. And as you see, guys, it's only 26 minutes dive, and we already have 146 minutes to go away back. Back yep. to the surface, back to the guys waiting for us. Time to bring a deck of cards. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And for you, a lot of money, my friend. <laughs> because right. I'm going to win from you. This is our way up. As you see, you have the anchor laying on the, on the sides. We recently found two other anchors. They were on the back of the wreck and they stop in the middle of nowhere. So we always have to make sure we have the right ones to go back up. And as you see, it's not so hard to follow them. They bring us straight up back to where our deco tanks are. And where the mooring line is. Correct. So on this area, once we come over the edge, you will see we are able to dump our deep stuff 
and go back to the shallow tanks, the shallow bailout tanks. And then we hope always that we have our standby divers, our safety divers, to take some tanks from us. Because uh, you see it's two hours waiting here. And there we have the light again coming out of the zone, coming back to the area where you, if you're lucky, you see the recreational divers again and you know, hey, I'm back. Well, not back yet, eh? Still have no, to wait. a couple of hours waiting. Here you have yeah. a line. Some of the corals we're able to look at. And this is especially for my teammate Bernardo. He's a little bit older than me. He can sit yeah, relaxed. Old, old man, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are the plants, like one of the dives. And this is actually what we're doing and trying to explore and try to bring to the world. Guys, come to Curacao. We have more than just one, two wrecks to dive. Yeah. And we have a lot of things to do after the dive. There's good restaurants in Curacao, really good restaurants. There's a lot of uh, other things to do. So you come uh, as a technical diver, you can. Yes, you can. And family can Another hang out in this good restaurant. Sorry? Yes, so the restaurant is there, enough place to, to, to have some combination with family, friends, and of course, have a chat with the guys with the substation, because even if you have guys are non-diving, we have an amazing, amazing combination. You go to the wreck and you put your family in the subs from substation Curacao, and it, it's unbelievable, even your wife, the kids are able to go on your technical dive. Make sure you do it right, guys, because they see also all the other things, if you're not doing it the way it should be done. So yeah, guys, if you have any ideas, we always hope positive ideas. Uh, you can find us on the boat, Tech Diving Curacao, or of course, Kobe Divers. Yep. On, and if you want to have a chat, if you have any ideas, if you have any questions, and we hope positive comment, then you know how to find us. Mm -hmm. And if you think, well, Stella Mar is too deep for me, then we have eight, nine different spots between 60 and 90 meters to go on to explore and maybe to build your experience to get ready for the wreck. Because yeah. Curacao is more, way more than just diving. Yeah. But for us, diving is the most important part. And for us, we have it all. Bernardo, are you ever get bored on the dives we're doing? Me? Bored? Yeah, just seeing you get in board. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. It's always me. Because we yeah, need some more people to come over. And I know that we have now the, the, the way that it's locked, You're not the way able to come. But I know for sure next year, guys, is your chance to come to us, to contact us, to make your dives, explore Curacao with us, have a nice uh, after dive, relax, come together on one of the amazing spots of the island. And uh, Kobe Maybe dives there. Banana will mix all your mixes, as you see in the back. He has more than enough tanks. They're waiting for you guys. And for me, I'll be there to guiding you and do some other stuff. And that's what it is, how it is. And that's the curious how it is, guys. Way, way okay. more than just diving. So hope to see you all guys as soon as possible. OK, thank you very much for, well, cool for diving. Up for thank good. you very much. Okay. Um, anyone who is interested to learn more about this very cool presentation about tech diving in Curacao, please head over to the event and look for Gobi Divers or Tech Diving Curacao, okay? And we're going off stage.